Good afternoon, um, mid-January afternoon in Strasbourg for the third of our programmes where we're interviewing prominent politicians in the European Parliament. Um, last time we had Bruno Golnisch here, uh, we're very pleased to have Bruno. This time round we've got a distinguished politician from um, Flanders, uh, Belgium, uh, Philip Kleiss, Flemish MP for the Vams Belang, and we also of course have Nick Griffin who is the uh, MEP for the northwest of England. I'm going to start off, Philip, we're very pleased to have you. A lot of people in our country are very concerned about the way the Belgian authorities turned on the, Vam the Vlaams bloc and effectively outlawed what was the most popular political party in, in the whole country. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, yeah, so well, if you talk about immigration in Belgium, uh, the whole system tends to um, put a label on you and tends to say you're racist, uh, you're a, an extremist, dangerous party, and they change the law mm -hmm. explicitly in order to uh, convict us. And um, they changed the law several times because when they saw that it wasn't as simple as they thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, for... Uh, there was a trial and it took I think about, about five years mm. um, and each time uh, the judges said well we're not competent because this is a politically motivated uh, uh, mm. trial and we, ha we are um, you know um, uh, magistrates and we're not politicians and mm. if the political class has a problem with another political party mm. it's their problem but it's not a problem of a court yeah. of justice and um, so they this happened twice, and then the third time um, mm. they um, they find they went to the highest court in Belgium, and they said, "Okay, it has to be redone." And then finally, they went to the Court of Appeals in Ghent, which is known as a very leftist uh, court, mm. and they found some judges who were willing mm. um, to convict yeah. a political party that was one of the major parties in Flanders at that moment. Mm. Well, it is, it still is, by the way. Mm. Um, but it's a scandal, of course, because mm. we didn't actually do anything that was against the law. We are mm. not a racist party, and we haven't been a racist party, mm. um, but what we want to do something about the problem of mass immigration, and yeah. this is one of the major problems in Belgian politics and Flemish politics, mm. because the, 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 the several governments now in Belgium and in Flanders have had really had an open doors uh, policy yeah. with regards to immigration, and this creates huge problems in mainly the big cities. Yeah. Just, 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 just out of interest. Um, did you have to pay for it to defend yourself in, in the courts? Did it cost you a lot, a lot of money? It cost us uh, some money, of course, yes. We, there was, um, we were convicted to, uh, to pay uh, a sum, which I, I don't remember exactly now, but we, it mm. was considerable. Yeah. And um, we were lucky uh, to have our own legal service within our party that worked uh, on this trial, but we had other lawyers mm. who worked for us, and we had to pay these people, of course. Mm. And um, yes, that's what they're trying to do. And by the way, there's something going on right now, even in Belgium, mm. because you have to know that political parties in Belgium get state funding. Mm. And, um, and, and, you know, and if you have uh, a lot of votes, you get lots of money. It's, mm. it's in, in uh, um, you know, that, that is the, if you have lots of votes, you get lots of money. If you get less of votes, you get less money. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, what they're trying to do is take away, take away from us this uh, state funding. So yes, is this yes, a, uh, primarily a political attack, which also has financial implications, or is it largely, in fact, a financial attack? decide to cripple or, or destroy you yes. and it's just disguised as a political attack uh, yes what's going on now is a political attack because they changed the law you know one more time um, re with regard to party funding and they said well the party that's, that has been convicted for racism uh, is not allowed to have any money from the state. And this is taxpayers' money? It's pa taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. But every party gets it mm -hmm. according to the number of votes it gets. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is um, well, you cannot have any other kind of funding mm -hmm. apart from state funding. Because um, as an individual you can give up to 500 euros, I think, mm -hmm. per year to a political party. But companies are not allowed. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not a bad thing, I think. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we wouldn't have this state funding, mm -hmm. well, we it would be very hard for us to, to it's keep it's on strangulation, in effect. Strangulation, yeah. you could say yeah. that. 
because they know that um, 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 the, the list, the, you know, if people give money to us, well, their names have to be disclosed, and, and, and if, the, if the names are going to be disclosed, well, mm. you, you can really have some problems in Belgium. It, it all sounds very familiar. Yes. What, what you're saying to us is uh, probably being received back in Britain as uh, a very familiar tale. It is, it is indeed. Yeah. Now, because obviously the, the, the attack on us over the last what, two years mm -hmm. uh, was very, very similar. Designs to uh, either just destroy us financially or in effect to ban us. Um, and they failed on both counts. That case is finished. We won. We beat off the attack. Uh, and our Equalities Commission, the, the arm of the state responsible, has said that, at least for present, they're not going to renew the attack. I'm sure they will in some way in the future, but for now, we're safe. Now, with the Vlaams block, of course, it was different, because, as I understand it, effectively, you were outlawed, and you're now the Vlaams Blang. What was the, the process and the change, and did the state expect that, or did you wrong-foot them? I think they might have expected it, but um, they were trying to break us up, of course. Um, the problem was that the law says that um, you know, political parties cannot be convicted as such. Mm. Um, so they they had three um, well um, three uh, subdivisions of our party that have been uh, convicted, but that meant that every member of the party mm. um, would you know would risk to be uh, himself. Uh, pursued by the Court of Justice yeah. and well, we know that. <laughs> wow. So we yeah. had to do something. We had to uh, disband our party and create a new party. Mm -hmm. And so the Vlaams Bloc became the Vlaams Belang, the mm -hmm. Flemish Interest Party. Mm -hmm. um, which w one thing that they didn't expect was that we had about six months after this conviction, we had um, a general election in Belgium mm -hmm. and we became the first uh, single party in Vlaams. So that was in, that. in the teeth of all this yes hostility and the strain of resisting it, you were able to, to grow in, in support sufficiently yes. to become the largest party in Flanders. Yes, because many Flemings were shocked by the mm -hmm. fact that we had been convicted because um, we hadn't done anything wrong, mm -hmm. we were just being convicted because of our opinions. Mm -hmm. And these opinions uh, happened to be uh, shared by more and more people and um, even people that normally wouldn't have voted for the Vlaams Belang mm -hmm. still voted for us to protest against uh, what happened yeah. in Belgium. So how, how do you feel as an MEP when you see various resolutions coming from the left within Parliament on about civil rights abuses all over the world and right here in the heart of yes. Europe you have yes. what's happened to you and what's happened to us. It's astonishing isn't it? Well this is hypocrisy from, mm. from the left mainly yeah. and uh, we have to fight that kind of hypocrisy. Yeah. And we, we always have to say what they are doing to curtail freedom of speech. Yeah. This is one essential thing in a democracy, I think. Mm. If you cannot have um, freedom of speech, real well, freedom of speech, yeah. real freedom of speech, then you don't have a democracy. No. And um, in, so we, we are in fact one of the most democratic parties in, in Flanders and in Belgium mm -hmm. because we are always very sensitive to that issue mm. and um, we always, um, you know, fight um, any attempt to uh, curtail or to ban freedom of speech. I think you either have freedom of speech or you don't. So mm. everybody you cannot or say nobody. for mm. everybody or nobody. Yeah. Or you, you, know, you cannot say there's freedom of speech except on this and this and this topic. Mm. So we, you, you should be able to talk about immigration. Mm. You should be able to talk about integration problems. Mm. And we, we have this, these problems. And I think most of these problems are getting worse just mm. because they cannot be addressed in a proper way. No, no. I are you of the opinion, I mean Nick, you, you are of the opinion that these things, they may seem bad at the time, but eventually they backfire in the aggressor and they actually benefit from what you've said, Philip, the, the, the results that you got straight afterwards. Um, looking back now, do you, do you actually welcome the attack on you? Do you think it benefited you well, electorally? Yes, or? well, it, it benefited us in the short term, of course, mm. for the elections that followed uh, on this conviction, but um, mm. there's a huge problem because we, it's very difficult for a party like uh, the Vlaams Belang to, mm. uh, thank, to, yeah, well, to, to, to work. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I mean, um, people who are candidates for our party mm. risk having serious problems. Uh, you know, they risk losing their jobs. Yeah. They, they risk all kinds of problems mm. and um, this should not be possible in a real democracy. Mm. Am, am I so, right in yeah? thinking, sorry to interrupt, am I right in thinking there's also a, a social security problem 
uh, potentially for people who are identified yes, as well, large blind. Yes, in, in, that, in a way that um, in order to, to receive um, uh, unemployment benefits in Belgium, mm. you have to be a member of uh, a trade union. Yeah. It's a very strange uh, situation. Trade unions um, paying uh, unemployment benefits to their members. Yeah. Um, so you can do it on, in an, on another way. There's a state system as well, but it works mm -hmm. really badly. So, yeah. uh, in fact, you are forced to be a member of uh, the trade unions, and the trade unions ban um, our members. <laughs> so everyone who has been a candidate for the Vlaams Berlijn on mm. in any kind of election mm. um, will be um, thrown out mm. of his trade union and will not be entitled to have his unemployment. Benefits. Astounding. There's a lot of similarities there, yeah. isn't there? I mean, yeah. this is what's, what's coming out. There's, there's a pattern yes. between um, nationalists that are, that are persecuted across Europe. We, we think they must, they must collude together, our oppressors, and gather notes and um, figure out ways to do it to do us down because what you're saying is almost exactly the same it's a carbon copy of what's happening in Britain and Except what happens the idea that you can't get social security <laughs> well that's coming <laughs> don't count your chickens approved party stunning so what now i mean um belgium of course the state of belgium was a british creation um you were obviously doing very well electorally um what is the future of belgium as a country well there's not a big future for belgium mm -hmm. um Belgium is an artificial country, it doesn't work anymore, it has become completely ungovernable mm -hmm. because you have a completely opposite uh, political consensus in the two main parts of the, of mm -hmm. the country, you have Flanders and Wallonia. Mm -hmm. In Wallonia you have a real strong left wing, in Flanders it's more centre right and right. Yeah. And uh, the, the two, the, this, it's really two countries within one country mm -hmm. and it has become really impossible to govern anymore. So we don't have a government for more than uh, seven months after the elections now. Mm -hmm. um, last time in 2007 it took nine months to mm -hmm. form a government and it's probably going to be even longer now mm -hmm. because the problems have all, all only become worse. And it's not only a problem of Flemings against Walloons, of, of Dutch speakers against, against French speakers. Mm -hmm. um, it, you see a gap in every um, policy issue. You see a, a gap on immigration, on social security, on mm. economics, on, on taxes, on mm. you just name it, on justice uh, mm. issues. And um, so what's going to happen is probably what happened to uh, Czechoslovakia. So mm. at a certain moment they saw that it, they're in an impasse. Mm. It couldn't work any longer and so they just took the conclusions and said, okay, now we have to split up in, a, in an orderly way, in an organized way, in a peaceful way. Mm. And now within the European Union, uh, Czechs and Slovaks get along uh, better mm. than they used to do uh, yeah. when they were forced to live in one country. Mm. And um, I hope and, and I'm sure um, that this will happen uh, in, with Flanders and Wallonia too. Do you mm. think that it's, uh, relatively speaking, as easy as it was for the Czechs and the Slovaks because we've always sort of been told or got the impression that Belgium in a way is this artificial federal state it's a model for the European Union and of course the European Union in terms of Brussels is really based there so my reading of it is that the the Europhiles would be extraordinarily reluctant to see Belgium break into into free countries uh, because uh, that's a message that federal systems don't last forever and nations are entitled to their freedom. Yes, I think uh, you're right on that point. Um, um, if you want to know the future of the European Union, well, you have to look at Belgium now. Mm. Mm. Um, and, um, of course, the, the problems that are uh, existing in Belgium between Flemings and Wallons are specific to Belgium. And uh, if we say we want an independent Flemish state, um, Normally, this should not have any implications for the other member states. Mm. Um, um, I think this is very important, and I think it's very it's going to be important for us that uh, our um, uh, independent state will be recognized by the other nations in the European Union and in the world, in the rest of the world. Um, but um, of course, this um, we only well we have to warn people in mm. the European Union that they shouldn't well become like a sort of Belgium on a on a higher scale yeah yeah this is very important I think yeah well gentlemen that's um, all we've got time for you've got an important meeting Philip at uh, about two or three minutes so we're very grateful for your time Nick as ever I'm grateful for your time and we'll be back again 
next month. Thank you.